In this video, I explain how to identify whether uh, the inhibition that an uh, enzyme might be experienced is either competitive, non-competitive, or uncompetitive. Okay, we've already derived uh, the rate law for each one of these inhibitions, and we can just rewrite them here. The rate, which is V, is going to be equal to Vmax, concentration of substrate over K sub M alpha, plus concentration of substrate, that is for competitive. Non-competitive, you will have Vmax, concentration of substrate, K sub M alpha, plus concentration of substrate alpha prime. And then for uncompetitive, you will have that the rate is equal to Vmax, concentration of S, over K sub M, plus concentration of S, alpha prime. Right. So the question is, well, uh, we're going to do experiments in which we first uh, measure the rate as a function of concentration substrate for the uninhibited uh, reaction, so in the presence of no inhibitor, and then we're going to add inhibitor and measure the rate. The question is, well, how can we tell apart whether uh, that inhibitor is going to be either one of these three cases? And it turns out that the best way to actually do this is to compare the Langwehr-Berg representations of these rate laws for the uninhibited case and then the inhibited one. Okay, so what we're actually going to do is just derive Langwehr-Berg uh, graphs for each one of these uh, three inhibitions, and then we'll compare it to the uh, original one, uh, uninhibited one, and then we'll be able to tell uh, whether it's um, what type of inhibition it is from the changes to the Langwehr-Berg plot. Right, so let's start here with competitive inhibition. Remember that uh, to obtain here the Langwehr-Berg plot, what you have to do is take the double reciprocal of this expression. Right, so the double recipro the reciprocal of that expression is 1 over V, and then uh, K sub M alpha plus concentration of S over V max X times S. All right, uh, or this is equal to 1 over V, uh, Km over V max alpha, 1 over S, plus 1 over V max. Okay, that is your Langwehr-Berg graph for or, or equation for competitive inhibition. Notice that what we do uh, in the Langwehr-Berg plots is we plot in the y-axis 1 over the rate and in the x-axis 1 over the concentration of substrate. Okay, looking at this graph, you see that that's uh, y, that would be the slope x plus v. That is the slope and that is the intercept. What we actually see when we compare this to the uh, uninhibited uh, Langwehr-Berg expression is that uh, the only difference is that alpha term, and that is only affecting the slope. The intercept doesn't change. Okay, so what we're going to actually say is that, well, if this is what happens uh, when the concentration of inhibitor is equal to zero, once you have con the concentration of uh, some inhibitor, uh, only the slope is going to change, the intercept isn't. And the slope is actually going to go up. Remember, this is equal to uh, 1 plus concentration of i over k sub i. All right? So uh, when you make this different than 0, larger than 0, this alpha is going to be larger than 1, which means that the slope goes up. Okay? So, but the intercept doesn't change. Right? So that's what happens at increasing concentrations of inhibitors uh, of inhibitor for competitive inhibition. Okay? The intercept doesn't change, but the slope does. That's a fingerprint for competitive. All right, so we can actually uh, continue to do this uh, for each one of the uh, remaining two inhibitions that we have here. Okay, so let's take non-competitive and try to derive here uh, the language for representation. 1 over V over is, equal, is going to be equal to Km alpha plus concentration of S alpha prime over V max times concentration of S. Okay? Separating terms, we're going to find that this is going to be equal to Km uh, over Vmax alpha 1 over S plus alpha prime over Vmax. Okay, now comparing this uh, equation to the one without inhibitor, we find that, well, both the slope and the intercept uh, are actually changed, modified by this inhibitor. Okay, Ax plus B. Okay, both the slope is affected by alpha and the intercept is affected by alpha prime. And both of them should go up. Okay, so uh, that's going to make a difference with competitive, which is this graph, because again, the slope will increase when you increase inhibitor, but the intercept will also increase. Okay, so that's what happens. 
Now, what I'm going to actually going to draw here is, is the special case in which alpha and alpha prime are the same. And in that particular case, what happens is that uh, the intercept with the x-axis happens to be the same, but that's something that is not particularly relevant, at least for us. Okay, again, so uh, what you will have is that, suppose that this is the graph when you actually don't have uh, any inhibitor. Okay, concentration of phi is equal to zero. Now, when you add inhibitor, both the slope and the intercept have to change. Okay, it turns out that if alpha and alpha prime are the same, the intercept with uh, that axis is also going to be the same. Okay, that and that. Notice that that's what happens when the concentration of inhibitor uh, goes up. Okay, the intercept is greater and the slope is also greater. And you could continue to do this. Okay, and fine, that's, that's probably not very good. Let's see if I can do it a little better. Yeah, that's a little better. You can actually see that the slope of these lines uh, continues to increase and the intercept with the y-axis continues to increase. And again, it's just a curiosity that uh, the intercept with the x-axis, if alpha is equal to alpha prime, then would be the same. Okay, so this is what happens for non-competitive inhibition. The fingerprint is that both the intercept with the y-axis and the slope change. Okay, and then for uncompetitive, okay, let me uh, erase this. Let's see what the case, how this language work representation looks like. Okay, for uncompetitive, again, okay, we will just take the double reciprocal, 1 over B, Km plus concentration of S, alpha prime over v max uh, concentration of s when you separate those two terms you're going to find here an expression 1 over v is going to be equal to km over v max 1 over the concentration of s plus alpha prime over v max okay that's your y that's your x in language of Berg, and that's your intercept okay so you can clearly see that the only thing that changes here is the intercept with the y-axis. When you change the concentration of inhibitor, the slope doesn't change. If the slope doesn't change, then what you should expect to find is lines that are parallel, but the intercept with the y-axis increases once you have some inhibitor present. Okay, so that would be uh, the line when you don't have any inhibitor. And then what will happen is that as you increase the concentration of the inhibitor, uh, you should observe parallel lines, okay, but uh, the intercepts increase according to the concentration of inhibitor. Okay, All right, so that's what happens with uh, increasing concentration of I. Uh, for uncompetitive inhibition, inhibition, then the the fingerprint is that when you do the language representation and compare it with the uninhibited case, uh, the slope of the uh, data points of the uh, rate data doesn't change, but the intercept gets higher. Okay. So that explains how to identify whether you have uh, competitive, non-competitive, and uncompetitive using Langwerberg plots.